it actually looked like at Sundance, these three chairs with butt kickers. Uh, we we uh, ma made the uh, five by five meters uh, dark room so that it kind of has the feel of the, of the basement where the family is hiding. So when you already enter, you, you, you start feeling something. And, uh, and this is the message we projected at the end of the experience. It's what was interesting at Sun is this really sparked a lot of conversations. Uh, we had people crying. It, it, it turned out to be an emotional experience that we were hoping to achieve. And then we had a lot of conversations with people telling us we will never read news in the same way or, you know, like now we feel like we were there, actually. We kind of feel like we know what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, and, and, well, and I also think it's important to, you know, the fact that we had a dark room allowed the audience to really take it in and have their, you know, when they took the headset off, they weren't in a brightly lit room. Bringing pe how you bring people into VR experiences and how you sort of climatize them back into reality is, is hugely important. So that, you know, it's just like if someone wakes you up from a dream, you're like, where am I as opposed to like, you know, being able to have a, uh, like a nice, you know, sort of like a, a ramp out of it. Um, the Paul McCartney... Uh, experience is compelling to be in the room with Paul McCartney. If you feel like you're actually there and he's playing his mandolin and he's telling you a story about, oh, I went to a guitar shop and I kind of like tried this mandolin and the chord structure was different and, I, and that inspired me to write a song. For us, that was interesting and we thought, well, how are we going to do that? And Tony, like I say, said, well, I just got to want to put everything all over the place. So um, from that point of view, uh, it's important to be able to manage all your media and think about... This is the reason that this came up, really. There's, a, there's a, a view that you need to force the viewer to look in a specific direction. I keep getting asked by people talking to me about VR, uh, and the, one of the first things they ask me is, what are the rules of VR? You know, what, what, what can we do and what can't we do? And I would say that the rule of VR is the same as the rule of all filmmaking. You've got to be able to try, you and the director have got to be able to try whatever stupid idea you come up with, or brilliant idea, you have to be able to look at it in context, in the viewer, and, and work with it. And if you haven't got an editorial system or a mindset with an editorial system that can handle strange requests and sudden, sudden whims, and you know, oh, I want to see this shot with a million guitars plastered all over it. I want to see this shot with a, uh, you know, a man on a scooter driving through the, through the thing. I mean, all, anything can come up. Um, you have to be able to uh, uh, just chop and change and grab shots and chop them up and throw them all over the place and move things around and change the order of sequences and find lines. You have to be able to move in the same way that you can when you're editing normal video. It's not good enough to go, oh, this is VR, it goes much slower. I mean, there is rendering and stuff like that, and sometimes it does just become impossible to go that fast, but it's not good enough to just say, well, it's different now, we don't have to produce the same quality output as we do in regular TV or broadcast or film. I think that the bar is still as high as it always was. It's all about the idea. It's not about the technology at all. It's always about the idea and the artistry. Um, 